to consider the images found by spherical mirrors to construct the images using some rays and all those things so when we say to construct the images we mean to say if i am given a spherical mirror and its parameters like its center of curvature distance from the pole of the center of curvature which we call as radius of curvature if that is given for me then i am also given the distance of the object from the pole of the mirror in that case where is the image formed so can we construct the image formed by it by the spherical mirror geometrically using some geometry so that is what do we mean to say construction of images found by spherical mirrors but before going for the construction of the images found by spherical mirrors which will also help us to understand the nature and size of the images formed by them we need to understand what are the rules to be followed in doing such an activity that means what are the rays to be considered to construct an image in the case of a spherical mirror either concave or convex whatever it is in the case of convex mirror when we take incident rays a parallel beam of light incident light which is parallel to the principal axis after reflection we have a divergent beam of light this divergent beam of light when i retrace them back beyond the mirror or behind the mirror then all these rays appear to come or emanate from a single point and that point lies on the principal axis of the convex mirror this particular point from where all the reflected beam of light or all the reflected rays of light appear to come from in the case of a convex mirror is known as the principal focus okay same case if you take up with the help of, with a concave mirror then what will happens is if i take a, pa a parallel beam of light which is parallel to the principal axis if it is incident on a concave mirror then all these rays after reflection will pass through a single point on the prin uh, principal axis of the mirror this particular point through which we will get all the reflected rays which are reflected from the parallel beam of light which is parallel to the principal axis after reflection the point on the principal axis through which all these rays pass through the reflected rays pass through is known as the principal focus the distance between the pole of the mirror and the principal focus we will call it as the focal length so we generally denote it by a small letter f okay second thing is the distance between the center of the curvature of the mirror either concave or convex to the pole of the mirror we will call it as radius of curvature okay these two are the distances the radius of curvature and the focal length are the distances whereas the principal focus pole and the center of curvature are the positions center of curvature and the principal focus lie on the principal axis which is the line joining the center of curvature to the pole of the mirror when you want to construct the images the first one to understand is that a ray parallel to the principal axis will pass through the principal focus in the case of a concave mirror and appears to pass through a principal focus in the case of a convex mirror in the case of convex mirror it appears to pass through why because it is not passing through it cannot pass through the principal focus is beyond the pole of the mirror it is behind the mirror okay so that is the reason in the case of a convex mirror the light ray which is passing parallel to the principal axis and is incident on the mirror appears to pass through the principal focus after reflection 
whereas in the case of a concave mirror a light ray which is parallel to the principal axis after incident on the concave mirror after reflection it the reflected ray will pass through the principal focus of the mirror that is the first rule to be noted down for constructing the images using geometry the second point to be considered for constructing the images in a spherical mirror is the light ray which is passing through the center of curvature in the case of a concave mirror or the light ray which is directed towards the center of curvature in the case of a convex mirror retraces its path after reflection why does it happen so we know that the distance between the center of curvature of a spherical mirror and any point on the spherical mirror is equal to the radius of curvature from geometry it is very clear that from center of a circle if you take the radius any radius will be perpendicular to the tangent drawn at the point of contact on the circumference of the circle same way here also when i am taking a light ray which is passing through the center of curvature and incident on the spherical mirror that is concave mirror then that means this light ray will be incident normally on the uh, surface of the mirror at the point of incidence when i say incident normally that means the angle of incidence is zero when the angle of incidence is zero obviously the angle of reflection is also zero so when the angle of reflection is zero that means the light ray will retrace its path after reflection so same way if you consider the convex mirror we say that the light ray which is directed towards the center of curvature that means the light ray should go and strike the surface center of curvature directly if that is the case that means the light ray should strike the surface of the convex mirror at a point of at the at a point where the angle of incidence is zero when we say the angle of incidence is zero here also the angle of reflection is also zero so when the angle of reflection is zero that means the light ray will retrace its path it will travel back in the same path as it is incident on the spherical mirror okay so this is the second point what we consider for constructing the images formed by spherical mirrors okay now the third point to be considered is that whenever a light ray passes through focus and incidence on a concave mirror after reflection will pass parallel to the principal axis of the concave mirror in the case of a convex mirror if any light ray is directed towards the focus principal focus of a convex mirror after reflection it will pass parallel to the principal axis of the mirror taking these three into account we will be able to calculate the exact position of the image formed in a either a concave mirror or a convex mirror for that what we need to know is we need to know the distance of the object from the pole of the mirror okay and then the focal length of the mirror which is nothing but the distance between the principal focus and the pole of the mirror or we need to know the radius of curvature of the uh, spherical mirror either convex or concave whatever it is here we need to take an approximation approximation in the sense when the aperture of the spherical mirror is a small when compared to the radius of curvature take this point very carefully when the aperture of the spherical mirror is very small compared to the radius of curvature of the spherical mirror when i say the word aperture it means the size of the mirror okay if the total size of the mirror can be measured by the diameter of the mirror the concave mirror or the convex mirror whatever it is so more the diameter more the aperture less the diameter less the aperture in a way we can say the total amount of exposed area for reflection we can call it as an aperture here we are considering a point that when the 
aperture of the mirror is smaller compared to the radius of curvature of the mirror right so when this is small there is an approximation that the focal length of the mirror is equal to half of the radius of curvature and that is the relation between the two so radius of curvature will be equal to twice the focal length and for this to apply the condition we consider is the aperture of the mirror is smaller when compared to the radius of curvature.